Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a new episode of Time to Football. I'm your host, Hassan Khan, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the Oakland Raiders and why they're no longer the laughingstock of the NFL. If you take a look at the AFC West standings, the Kansas City Chiefs are 6-4, and four, and they're barely holding on to the division lead. It's anyone's division at this point. I mean, just flip a coin to see who's going to win that division. Actually, let's not flip a coin. Seattle, what's your call? Your call is heads. Geno Smith. But before we get into all that, we're going to tell you guys about Overlay DFS. This is daily fantasy football where every matchup is in a start or sit format. Pretty much all you do is just guess which player is going to have more fantasy points for that week. This week's matchups include Lamar Jackson versus Deshaun Watson, James White versus Miles Sanders, DeAndre Hopkins versus Amari Cooper, and so many more matchups. Someone this past week put down $2.50. That's it and won $1,100. Right now, there are a couple jackpots of $2,600 and even $25,000. To sign up and start playing, download the app for iOS or click the link in the description. Go to www.overlaydfs.com. Hungriest player of the week, the one that wanted it the most. It's funny that we're talking about the Oakland Raiders in this video because our hungriest player of the week is on the Oakland Raiders. Safety Eric Harris had two interceptions in a victory against the LA Chargers. He could have had three, but one was called back because of an offside penalty that wasn't his fault. And he also returned one of those interceptions for a touchdown, proving that he is a key playmaker in this Oakland Raiders defense. And that is why he is the hungriest player of the week. So now we're gonna tell you why the Oakland Raiders are no longer a joke and why they should be taken more seriously. So what made them into a joke? Well, for years, they haven't had a lot of success. And that dates back to the NFL draft, where their draft strategy was just drafting the fastest player. All right, Mr. Davis, you have nothing to worry about. All right, this is gonna be our year. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye. How you doing? I'm good, yeah. Grab a seat. Okay, so I know this is kind of last minute, but Something just happened that might require us to revise our draft board. Well, the scouting team and I think we should take Jackson Steele in the first round. Jackson Steele. Steele. Jackson Steele from BYU. A seventh round prospect that lacks versatility. His awareness is subpar and his route running skills are subpar as well. Not to mention that he's a huge douchebag off the wait, field. Why wait, would I consider? Wait. Just take a look at his 40 time. Dear God. Yeah. Do you want me to go ahead and make the changes? Yeah, yeah. Um, get right on it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Davis, there's a slight change in our draft order. Um, I'll email you the details later. Okay. This is our year. So obviously the Raiders have been struggling for some time. But then they bring in John Gruden to be the next head coach, and he flips on NFL Network, sees Mike Mayock on TV, and brings him in to be the general manager. That's like me watching an episode of Breaking Bad, hitting up Aaron Paul and being like, hey, want to cook some meth for me? Are you any good? Of course not. He's not any good. He's an actor. But the criticism continued when Mayock and Gruden came together and made the decision to trade Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack, a once-in-a-generation player. But this whole time, they had a plan. They used the draft picks that they got from the Cleo Mack trade to draft someone like Cleland Farrell. Now, Farrell isn't someone like Cleo Mack, a superstar player. They also drafted Josh Jacobs, their future franchise running back, and a hard-hitting safety in Jonathan Abram, which unfortunately, he's been hurt all season long. They signed a very underrated wide receiver in Tyrell Williams. They see the potential in Darren Waller, and Derek Carr has improved and is playing lights out. Raider fans, you have something to look forward to in the future. They handled the Antonio Brown situation as best as possible. They didn't let that affect their team. They released him. 
and now they have a lot of cap space moving forward. Currently, the Raiders are 5-4, and four, not that far back for the division lead in the AFC West. If you take a look at the schedule coming up for the Raiders, they have the Bengals, the Jets, the Titans, the Jaguars, the Broncos, the Chargers. These are all teams that they should beat or have a chance of beating. So the question I have for you is this. Now that we know that the Raiders should be taken more seriously, should they make the playoffs? Leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Join in on the discussion. I would love to interact with you guys and hear your opinions. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date when we come out with a new episode every single week. Also, hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. The username for all three is at time to football. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you next week. Put your hands up.